Marvel has every right to put out the kind of book that they like. That's their business, to sell books. And if these books, if some of these books don't go well, there's, a, there's an element in these books that should be corrected. And the same goes for any other company and any other independent. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. It's time to look back at at uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates' Captain America run. Came in with a bang, big sales on number one. Kind of went out on a whimper. I don't think that this is going to be the most well-looked-upon run of Captain America in history for quite a few reasons. We got the last issue this week, number 30. had been delayed many times, just like the uh, finale of Black Panther has been delayed a lot as well. My thoughts on this issue. Tiny Heasy Coates doing what Tiny Heasy Coates doing best. I have, you know, lots of talking, lots of statements, you know, speaking in a lot of hyperbole and not a lot of action. Is that what you want from your from your uh, action based storytelling in Marvel Comics? Not every story needs to to end with fisticuffs or some type of major battle, but uh, you know, it was just it was quite frankly boring. And guess what? The Red Skull's own words did him in in the end once he talked about, you know, his ideology and what he believed and kind of funny stuff when you think about a lot of people's views on these things that they would like to censor free speech where, um, you know, it almost feels like Tiny Tiny Easy Coates would almost champion it here in this issue. Don't know that that's how he feels uh, in, in true life. <laughs> and I've, uh, you know, people like Jordan Peterson, who he's essentially modeled the Red Skull after, you know, should be able to say whatever they want on campuses and stuff. Whatever. That's not really, that's besides the point. Let's talk about this this uh, comic book, this comic book run. Unfortunately for Tiny Easy Coats, and I'm, I've heard that he didn't realize this, he replayed, like, he everything he did as far as story arcs had already been done before. Of course, with a new modern twist on it, but it was essentially the same stuff. Nothing really new introduced in here except for I guess the Daughters of Liberty. We got the Sons of Liberty in, in Wildstorm. We certainly have the Daughters of Liberty in history. We got the Children of Liberty already in the Marvel Universe. Are the Daughters of Liberty led by Sharon Carter really a, an original idea? I don't know. I guess that's up for debate. I guess that's his one contribution. Kind of like uh, Tom King's one ta- contribution to Batman is Gotham Girl. Will it be used in the future? I imagine the Daughters of Liberty have more potential to be used in the future than than, uh, than Gotham Girl does in Batman. But, you know, Tiny Heasy Coats, run. Quite boring. In several instances, Captain America Steve Rogers was playing second, third, and even fourth fiddle in his own comic book title. You imagine people come to a Captain America story, a Captain America com- comic book, Throw down their hard-earned money to read a Captain America-led story. You don't always get that. Um, you know, you didn't always get that with the Tiny Heasy Coats run. The highlight of Tiny Heasy Coats run certainly are the covers from Alex Ross. I imagine those were placed on this comic book strategically to, to help boost sales. There is a, a large fan base of Alex Ross that specifically buys comics for the covers and don't read them. And you see them, you know, put him on certain titles strategically. Obviously, he's also been on Immortal Hulk the whole time. That those didn't need Alex Ross. Let's uh, let's be honest. Alex, uh, for there for a while, Immortal Hulk was the best selling Marvel title. There for a few months, when it was even outselling Batman. Due to some shenanigans, Marvel was pulling some marketing, uh, you know, tricks to up the sales for Immortal Hulk. But it was definitely a heavyweight there for quite quite some time, and did did well all the way to the end. So it's not like Alex Ross can just carry a series on his own. He certainly can accentuate and, and up some uh, orders when necessary. Now, was Ta-Nehisi Coates' Captain America run successful? I guess that's how you look at it. Was Ta-Nehisi Coates able to use Captain America as a mouthpiece in, in a, um, you know, a plot device to further some ideologies and political agendas that Marvel Comics, it feels like themselves, certainly Tony Heasy Coates and others, you know, around the, that sphere would like to amplify and push forward. Well, certainly. In that respect, I believe they will go down and say that Captain America by Tony Heasy Coates was, was successful. 
they will they were able to get their point across. Now, to how big of an audience and how successful that was, that's a whole other story. It's a little bit interesting. It's like many comics today. You get a big bump on the first issue, and then the sales go down. We can compare it to a couple of other runs featuring Steve Rogers in the not-too-distant past. We had the Rick Remender run starting November 2012. Number one issue hit 123,000 copies sold to comic shops. Very successful. Not as successful as Tony Hesey Coates, number one. He had 25 issues on the title featuring Captain America before um, there was a new Captain America kind of took over. By June 2013, sales were down to 43,000. Respectable, but not very good. You would think that a, a character like Captain America would be able to, to carry at least 60,000 issues well into his run. And by December 2014, on issue number 25, it spiked back up to, to 74,000 issues shipped. But the, the month prior, November, it did 38,000. So it kind of settled into that re region where it was like you know 40,000, right around there. We also can look at Nick Spencer's run, which started in August 2017, also number 25. Marvel's numbering is the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen in the world. Now, this one did not get like an issue one bump, I guess, it's because it was an issue one. But it's this also coming off of the heels of Secret Empire, which started hot. People liked the idea. And by the, by the time they got to the end of it, I think people realized what they were staring down the barrel of. And uh, the popularity had certainly cooled off by the time he took over as the full time writer of, of Captain America. So that one was at 40000 for the first issue he released, which was number 25. We get into May 2018. They released two issues as he finished up. Issues number 701 and 702. Did I mention that Marvel's numbering is absolutely ridiculous? <laughs> and it shipped 40000 and 43000 in May 2018, respectively. So it, it came in at 40000 It settled right down there. What you saw with Rick and Remender's run prior, that 40000 region, at least... It, for those past two runs from 2012 into 2018, 40,000 seemed to be like the, the low bar. You know, they, they would dip down below that every once in a while, but not all that often. We get to ta Coats' Coates run. Issue number one, July 2018, 167,000. Blows Rick Remender's issue number one out the door from six years prior. 167,000, an enormous success. Congratulations, ta Coats. Coates. And the uh, marketing team at, at Marvel Comics, that was a big success. By issue number two in July, I'm sorry, in August 2018, it was already down to 61,000. Still good numbers. But by December of 2018, on issue number six, it had gone down to, to that kind of that range that we expect a, a Captain America title to sit at from what we saw from the previous runs at 44,000. By May of 2019, on issue number 10, it had dipped below there to 36,000. December of 2019 at issue number 17 is at the end of the year at 30,000. And then the final year and then the final month that we actually have numbers for concrete data as far as comic books sold to shops. Issue number 20 was at 26,000. So that's the last hard number that we have dipping well below that established threshold of 40,000 that Remender and Nick Spencer essentially set or had been set by previous years with those two creators. We're well past issue number 20. We're at issue number 30. Will there be a bump on the final issue? Who, who knows? Does it even matter at this point? But you can see financially and as far as sales and, and getting comic books out there, it has dipped and deviated from the, uh, from the previous creators. At this point, you know, just ballparking, you imagine this is probably well, well under um, 20,000 by now. Maybe you got a bump on the last issue, but by 29, you expect these numbers to be well under 20,000. And when it stopped shipping, it, or when we got, and when we stopped getting concrete numbers in March 2020, it was down at about number 66 in the industry Batman's Grave, number six, Savage Avengers, number 11, Iron Man 2020, number three, and Wonder Woman 753. We're all kind of sitting around it. So it's not like it had terrible company. There's some big name titles in there. You know, Iron Man 2020 was supposed to be an event. Although I think most people were on a day in slots Iron Man by that point. 
So I would say in the long run, if you take out the message and what they were trying to put through is, is ideology and um, using Captain America as a mouthpiece, just as, as hard sales, if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense kind of numbers, I would say this is this is a failure. You dipped well below the, the established 40,000 threshold by issue number 10. You released 20 more issues at under that. So not exactly popular in my estimation. Just looking at the numbers, too bad. We do, we do have the metric. We don't know the exact numbers anymore, but it's still coming in at around 70 in the industry, but they are releasing a lot less comics right now. So I, like I said, I imagine it's well under 20,000 at this point. And we did see that the, the upper crust of comic sales as far as floppies have risen, but kind of like the middle and the lower stuff all were dropping dramatically as, as far as sales. At least that's the word I got from a lot of industry insiders and in, in comic shops. So we get to this point. Ta-Nehisi Coates runs over. I imagine Marvel considers it success. They were able to get the message out. Business-wise, you have to consider it not a success. It dipped a load, established thresholds pre previously, and was selling well below that, probably at half by the, by the time they were done. Is there hope for Captain America moving forward? Well, after reading United States Captain America, it doesn't provide much help. Like I mentioned in my, uh, my video with, with Doug Ernst, it feels like a eulogy. It felt like the death of Captain America. Finally, uh, you know, the American dream's dead. I've enjoyed the, the controversy, I guess. That issue got some got picked up on Fox News or something. So like Dean Cain and some comedian I never heard of were talking about, uh, you know, what Marvel had done to cele celebrate Captain America's 80th anniversary in Ca United States Captain America. I was not a fan. We also know that, you know, in Marvel Comics 1000, they originally had a, a, I think a Mark Wade had written, was it a poem or was it a letter? But it was very anti-American. And at that point, they had, had taken it out and made him rewrite it, <laughs> write, write something else. And at this point, you have a pretty, you know, anti-American dream, at least, uh, issue that, or not the whole issue, just the first six pages you know, coming out of the thoughts of Captain America from Chris Kate. Well, and this time it was okay. So does that, that portend good things for Captain America if you're a fan of, you know, um, the character that represents the American dream and fights for it? Probably not. But there's always hope. There's always hope. Things could change. Marvel could change their mind. Marvel Comics could decide based on what has happened with the sales trajectory of the previous Captain America run that maybe that's not the direction if they want to make money with the character in comic books. Eventually, you know, you got to get to brass tacks. You got to make money. This is a company after all. So there is hope. Perhaps they will change direction. Maybe they'll take the politics out of Captain America a little bit. Maybe you can have some political intrigue, you know, political thriller type stories, but maybe not tie it so much into the current climate around America. I don't think they'll do that, but there's a hope it, it could happen. The last really great run of Captain America, in my opinion, Ed Brubaker's, certainly had plots with political intrigue and stuff, but wasn't completely tied into everything that was happening on the streets. And there's a reason it was successful and well thought of. Were the sales, you know, blowing these out of the water? No. But it's thought of fondly, <laughs> and people still want to read those stories, and that's important. In my estimation, the best people that they could turn to for Captain America moving forward, and I've talked about this before, Chip Zdarsky. In my opinion, the last good portrayal we got of Captain America in a Marvel comic was in his Defender story, where they had that that cool kind of, was it 10 issues, like a 10-issue Defenders, where, where you had Namor, the original Human Torch, Captain America stuff. It was a really good story, really undervalued and criminally Criminally under read and ordered. If you get a chance to go read that, I think you'll enjoy that version of Captain America. Do I think they'll go with Chip Zdarsky? Listen, they didn't give him Fantastic Four. If that tells you what to think about Chip Zdarsky's, uh, you know, uh, ability to sell comics moving forward, although he is getting Batman work now. You know, at least DC Comics has some faith in the guy. The next writer I would want on Captain America is Patrick Gleason. He wrote 
the the last before that good version of Captain America, and it wasn't like he went in depth on on Cap in Marvel Comics one thousand. I think it was like the Pledge of Allegiance when a very nice patriotic image of Cap, Captain America, really celebrating the spirit of the character. He's working on Spider Man. He's going to be part of that writing team. But he also did help rehabilitate Superman after the New 52 and Rebirth with the aid of Peter J. Tomasi. And I think Patrick Gleason would be perfect for it. There's no way they're giving it to Patrick Gleason, but he would be the band. Next up uh, would be Philip Kennedy Johnson. He's active duty military. He's in the U.S. Army Band. He's getting a lot of bigger gigs. He's doing the Alien book at Marvel right now, which looks to have done pretty well. He's got the Superman gig, at least in action moving forward at, at – uh, DC Comics. So he's getting bigger exposure. I think he would probably do a good job. Just an outside the box, you know, Peter J. Tomasi, obviously, looks like he's a free agent. He's going to be working at Image Comics under Jeff John's imprint there. I think he would do a good job, but they're not going to bring in Peter J. Tomasi into rehab uh, Captain America. I have heard the word on the street is they did offer this, this job, this gig, to Christopher Priest, and he turned it down. Obviously, he was working on the U.S. Agent John Walker miniseries. I think a Priest run on Captain America would be fabulous. I would be very interested. I think he's the type of creator that could probably say something about what's going on in in the current culture of America today without being so overly one-sided or so politically motivated that it, it feels like you're getting preached to even though his name is Priest. So it's it's too bad he turned it down. So who are the most likely new creators on Captain America? I hate to say it after reading United States Captain America number one, Chris Kalewell. If you're, if you're saying, Wes, you got to put your money down. Who are you putting your money on to be the next writer for Captain America? I'm going to put it on the guy that just wrote the United States Captain America with Alana Smith as the head editor that just you know buried the American dream. It feels like it's in line with what Marvel Comics would like to say about America using Captain America. Probably a trial run. I imagine Chris Cantwell is the most likely pick out of the Marvel writers that we have now. Just look at what he's doing to Iron Man. I mean, how many times can you um, you pull the privilege card on Tony Stark as he's almost dying saving people via Hellcat? I bet the editorial team at Marvel are drooling all over themselves reading Chris Cantwell put Captain or Iron Man in his place in his own comic book. The next name would be John Ridley. He's getting a lot of big time gigs. Obviously he was doing the, the Jace Fox next Batman. Now he's got next Batman second son. Now he's got, I am Batman tying into fear state. He's also moving over and doing the black Panther series, following up on tiny. He see coats rather than there. So maybe he moves over and follows up tiny. He see coats on Captain America as well. Wouldn't be in favor of that one either, just of what he's what he has said about Superman. <laughs> that man hates Superman more than any anybody I've ever met. Superman, the, you know, the fighter of the downtrodden and poor. John really hates that character because really he's the the symbol is the ultimate symbolism of like white supremacy. At least that's the way it kind of it sounded like John really thinks of Superman. So I don't know that I want him on Captain America, but I'm certain Marvel would be interested in it. And then the last name, uh, kind of a wild card, Mariko Tamaki, certainly has had some not super high profile gigs at Marvel, but higher profile gigs at Marvel. She's got the Detective Comics writing gig at DC. Is doing an okay job. I, I'm not reading into that stuff because I'm not interested in, in Future State or the, the uh, Magistrate or any of that stuff. But if you had to, if you asked me, Wes, who's doing a better job on Batman, James Tynan or Mariko Tamaki, I'd, I'd say Mariko Tamaki. But, you know, the bar is not all that high if you ask me. I don't really like James Tynan's Batman run. But Mariko Tamaki certainly has had a history at, at Marvel Comics. This could be the first really big gig that she got. I could see them going that way. So there is still hope for Captain America. They might not go with Chris Cantwell, John Ridley, or Mariko Tamaki. Maybe they will go with Chip Zdarsky. Maybe they will go with Patrick Cleese. Maybe Peter J. Tomasi comes over. He's a free agent. He would do good on the character. There's hope. But it's probably a fool. So, I mean, pretty the honest, they let Tardisi Coates take sales for 20 issues and kept him on the, on the series as it dipped below established thresholds from previous creators. 
and they, they kept running with it. So I don't think Marvel Comics treasures Captain America in his history quite as much as the readers do. Let's just put it that way. I think in their minds, they view Captain America and it's their responsibility to use Captain America as a mouthpiece to better the world to make it more like they would like it. And that's just me being thinking cynical. 